I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike? Fuck, get cold. You know who coming to the same. Go. You know that that's us when we talk about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, then listen some more. Oh no, your station not dropping no music. Start like a dealers, but not get just do it. Down four on the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck, Mike, and Combs. You know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Buckasha here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhourradio.com. Check out the merchandise page. Check out the blog section as well. And of course, always check the latest, greatest news right there on the front home page. Have an action packed show for you tonight. We're going to talk NFC East and draft grade, draft breakdowns. We got a little bit of NBA talk, and of course, a little bit of MLB talk as well. But first, if you are YouTube.com forward slash man right now, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and also hit hit the join button. You can become a member as little as 99 cents a month over there on the man hour. You get discounts on merchandise. You get after hours footage. You get free t-shirts. You get free hoodies for like a year. Starting at 9 99 you get a free hoodie every year. But before we get too carried away, let's welcome the man, the myth, the wet behind the hearings himself, the Wyatt Williams at Man Hour underscore TWW. What's up, Wyatt? What's going on, man? Glad to be here. Man, it is. Every time you guys have a show on Sunday and I watch, like I feel kind of left out just a tad bit. But you had some big things happen on Saturday. You got to announce your first ever Division One softball game on ESPN Plus. Moorhead State versus, who, like, who, who, who was it? SI. Uh, SIUE. Southern Illinois University of Ellington, SIUE. They call them yeah. Suey at, at uh, they call them Suey like a like a pig at uh, Morehead State. <laughs> right. So why you? Uh, so the game that I tuned tuned into was the one o'clock game, and you were basically playing doing play by play all by yourself. Yeah. No, I fi- I found out once I got down there that I was by myself. I was uh, we were riding down and I had no clue, but uh, they let me know whenever I got there they were all by myself and they kind of like looked at me. They were like, "Are you okay with that?" And I'm like. Well, it's the ESPN people here, so I can't really tell them no. <laughs> so, right. like, let's do this. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're, worst I mean, things that happen. <laughs> I screwed so, up. I don't know. <laughs> so first things first is you have never called a play-by-play on a baseball game or a softball game, uh, and you had to do it solo all by yeah. yourself. On the ESPN networks right out the gate. Yeah, it's pretty on difficult. On the ESPN networks. Yeah. Were you nervous? Were you excited? Like, like what I mean, you, the you, whole you, situation? Yeah, I mean, you always get the nerves. You know, I was riding down with Nikki and, you know, um, literally Nikki's my best friend. I mean, like I, I, there is so much stuff I could not do without her. Uh, you guys know, like I, I depend on her so much with everything and, and, and even it's and necessarily in those situations. Um, because you know, the nerves absolutely, absolutely do run. You do get nervous. Um, it, it's just that simple. You know, you, you, you see, you, you see the field. You, I, I, the first thing I did was I walked out on the field and I wanted to kind of sit out there for a second and really take in everything, you know, to make myself feel more at home. Um, I went around and talked to everybody there to kind of calm myself down, but oh yeah, the nerves were rolling. I oh the whole ride down there, I felt like I was going to throw up. Then I was like, I got this. I'm going to do this here. The coolest, the coolest souvenir I've ever got from a broadcast, though, a softball. This ball, this ball was a foul ball that was hit straight up over my head and landed like two feet behind me. And I got to keep it. So I, I, I actually got two that day I was down there. And I signed and dated it and gave one to my mom and dad and wrote a little note to them uh, on it with the score in the game and, you know, put ESPN on it. And then I kept this one for myself. So uh, yeah. it, it was it was a really cool experience. It was a really cool day. But whew, it, it was it was a little nerve-wracking there at first. But we, we got through it. Yeah, I, I have tried doing, like, a solo show here on the Man Hour once or twice. And it has gone downhill really, really, really quick because it, it takes a special type of person – to do anything by yourself, like have a conversation with yourself, call baseball games, softball games, whatever. It takes a very, very special person f- f- for you. And you just being 18 years old, getting a chance to call ESPN game on, live on T- TAV like this. Did, this wasn't like a pre-recorded, and then you did a voiceover. No, it was all live. It was all raw, and you did an excellent job. I'm very, very proud of you, and you did a great job, man. 
So. No, I, pre- I appreciate it so much. And everybody else here who listened to the show, um, I noticed so many people reaching out. So many people like Hoffy, uh, Combs, yourself, Tori, all you guys, you know, Nana, everybody who listens to the show, everybody tuned in and watched the game. I really appreciated everybody's support. I felt every bit of it. I wish I could text every single person, uh, but I-, I know I'd miss somebody and then I'd feel bad because of it. So I posted something on Facebook to thank everybody. And I want to say it here. Thank you to everybody who tuned in and who has supported me along this journey. I appreciate it more than you'll ever know yeah and we do have some people chiming in here early here on the facebook page like we have drew drew welcome to the show you are a very loyal fan thank you for all your support drew of course we have nana hearst thanks buddy like her like her like like herself she is in here and then drew comes in and says con 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 congrats Wyatt. very proud of you and the appreciate it always says says also why as well so guys thank you for all the support but we do have to welcome the third wheel to the man hour here mr substitute teacher himself at Manatter underscore Tory. Tory, what's going on today, brother? It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Again, Jeez. with my best record, Milwaukee Brewers still. And for as much whining as Combs does, <laughs> CBS even ranked the Brewers as the number one team in all of baseball. Jeez. Render the salad unto Caesar. Mr. Tory Anderson there. We should we should start calling call you Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. So Mr. Tory's neighborhood there. So Tory, you are in the neighborhood of getting jerseys. You have a lot of football jerseys, baseball jerseys, etc. The NFL draft has happened. So what jersey are you going to go after? Oh I'm, See, sure I'm a, a homer jersey. I'm, <laughs> I, I'm I'm a homer guy, so that's the thing. All my jerseys are for Packers because I go to the Packer games. So why would I get another team's jersey? So um, I don't know. I am actually, and if they make one, I may get a Rogers jersey, an Amari Rogers jersey. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Why? So, what about you? Oh, sorry, sorry, Tori. Because I, uh, I already, I have two Aaron Rodgers jerseys already, so I have a yeah. green and a white Rogers jersey. So I might as Are well. Are you going go to get a blue that. Rogers jersey as like the well. retro, the the throwback jerseys? No, I'm I'm talking no. about the Denver Broncos jersey. Uh, I mean. Maybe. Yikes. Yeah, it really had to pull that <laughs> card on us. No, I, I, I already know what, what I'm getting, okay? I was an offensive lineman myself. Offensive line is the second most port, important position on the field, right behind quarterback. So give me Josh Myers, the Buckeye who replaced the Buckeye, Corey Lindsley, and is going to be one of the top centers in the league here in a couple of years. Josh I am so excited that you are on the team. I cannot wait. I got to watch this guy play in college a couple of times at the Big Ten Championship and stuff. Really, really good center. Super glad to have him on the team. He's got yeah, some competition so. there. There's a couple of Badgers that got drafted as well. So, Well, one got drafted. Ah. Cole Van Lannen, uh, the left tackle from the Badgers, got drafted. And then they signed John Deaton, who played center and guard for the for the Badgers last year, so they have a backup plan just in case it doesn't work out. Uh, I wanted to put some out here real quick. A uh, Facebook user right here uh, says, "Awesome, Wyatt. Will you either comment your name or will you go? If you what is it, Buck? If you go to Streamyard and you select, so so in the link that you are watching this on, there is a little there's a hyperlink that you click like on that basically approves uh, Facebook to use your name, so we can actually see who you are. Yeah. So it's just a, it's just just a simple com uh, uh saying, yes, uh, you can use my name and likeness, basically what it comes down to. I mean, they're not going to sell your information, but like people like Drew here, well, we see who we see, we see see who he is. And the only people who are going to sell your information is Tori. That's that's really it. Yeah. I mean, and that's just, I'm going to try to sell you <laughs> advertising space on here. Yeah. <laughs> Tori is the, uh, is the outside sales guru there. But guys, I really like how you guys picked Homer, Homer picks there. Uh, I, 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 We're I, picking I would go teams. A, I mean, I would go with the Homer pick too as well, but I'm going to get a King jersey, like 100. percent So just just to when, when they trade him to Kansas City, you mean? No, uh, he I heard uh, Kevin he King Cardinals, Kevin King, number 20. This guy right here, here. Let me let me go ahead and bring him out there for you. Oh, there we go. Welcome back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> see, I don't, no, I, see, they... but that's what I don't understand. I was sitting there thinking about it earlier, and I'm like, why would we re-sign him just to draft Stokes? How does that make sense? Security blanket and depth. That's how that works. <sighs> but not See, whenever we need to, not whenever we need a security blanket on our quarterback, which is depth at the wide receiver position. That's the security we, and depth we need. Wyatt, okay, you've been on record saying we have one of the best receiver cores in the league. It can always get better, can it? No, it can't. 
you can only put so so many guys on the field. Dude, the Packers' best wide receiver, okay? And in my opinion, when he retires, if he stays a Green Bay Packer his entire career, he will be the greatest Green Bay receiver of all time. Devontae Adams is the best receiver they've ever gotten Gotten Aaron Rodgers, okay? Second rounder out of Fresno State. Second you, rounder you out did, of Fresno State. You never got to watch Sterling Sharp play. If Sterling Sharp would have never had his neck injury, he would have hands down been the best receiver ever. I don't... I, Sterling Sharp, I don't even know if he might be top three for me. That's because you never saw him. I think one is Donald Driver. Overrated. I think two is probably Jordy Nelson. And as of right now, I think three is Greg Jennings until... Again, you're you're missing Don Hudson, who is one of the... Yes, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Hold on, hold on, on, you're right, you're right. I I totally messed that one up. I take that back. Give me one more try on that one. Boy take Dollar. off Greg Jennings. Take off Greg. No, take off Greg Jennings, and I'll put in Don Hudson right there at three. There you go. You are right on that one. I messed that one up. Oh, youngin. Oh, youngin. Wow, this has turned into so Packer Hour real, real yes. quick. Sheesh. <laughs> I did not know I was on. You a better ring the Packer bell because we're about to take him to school on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, like we do have an action pack show happening for you guys. We're going to break down the NFC draft picks and and like and grade each one of one of their picks. We're going to introduce a new game later in the show called Guess Who, where basically where a Tory and Wyatt will have basically have to. An- Ask yes or no questions to me to guess and to guess an athlete. Uh, so we are going to get into that. Of course, we're going to get into some who's hot, who's who's not, because this is the Monday edition right here on the Man Hour. That is uh, NBA and Major League Baseball talk a little bit there coming here at the bottom of the hours. But guys, before we get into sports talk, let me ask you this generalized question here, Tori. I'm going to kick it to you first, just because why it seems to have gone everywhere in the United States of America. If you could go on vacation and money wasn't an issue, where would you go? But did you forget I travel around the world for work? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God. So I thought about this. Where would I ever go if money was not? Can it be multiple destinations? Number uno. That's uh, French for one. Europe. <laughs> <laughs> because then I could go see all the ba- – my big thing is, is I'm a big World War II history buff, and I my ideal vacation would be – You can't a, say Europe. Blue. Hold on now. you got to pick a place. You can't just give me a continent, okay? Stop That's not with a this continent. Co- That's a, it is a continent. Europe's okay. a continent. Europe is a continent. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Drink! <laughs> That's like saying I want to go to Canada. Okay. Um Toronto, Vancouver, uh, Sacagawea. <laughs> it's my vacation. Jeez. So, so I've, I don't, because like I've, I've, I've been to, well, I've been to Hawaii, which a lot of people would say, you know, I, I don't want to go to Australia because something will probably kill you in three seconds being there. <laughs> um, You're never safe there. I've been to Australia. It's actually really, really beautiful. Be, be, Beautiful. I, I, that's what there. everybody said. Every, I, was, I can't go there. I'm a felon too. I, I'm a felon in Australia. Why? Uh, I have a DUI, so um, <laughs> you, I would have to. I would have to petition the Australian government to enter the country because I have a DUI because that's a felony over there. It's a felony here too, isn't it? No, it is not. Oh. It's close. <laughs> well, it's not a misdemeanor. <laughs> I am so weird fact. In Wisconsin, Wisconsin was the last state to make driving under the influence a misdemeanor. Up until 2008, it was considered a traffic fine. <laughs> of, of course, the state full of of, of beer and cheese <laughs> was the last one to throw it in there. <laughs> so, and now it's now it's just a misdemeanor. You don't even get any jail time or anything for like your third one here. Oh my god! Remind me never to to live there or go go there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why? Quickly before we go to break, since Tori's going to waffle around the answer. Give me where do you want to go? Simple, very simple. The most. We don't really care where you want to go, Why? Because this is the man hour, and you have to be a man to go on vacation. No, I'm I'm I'm, I'm totally kidding. We're kidding, Wyatt. Where do you want to go, man? Simple, very simple. The most beautiful place in all of the United States of America. Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. Portland, Maine. It's beautiful. Okay. There you guys go. 
So if you guys would like to uh, help Wyatt go to Portland, Maine, hit that like button right now. Share this with a, cu a cu couple friends as well. And uh, Tori wants to go to Europe, so I guess you can hit the like button and help, and help him out, out, out too as well. But guys, we're going to take a quick little break on the other side of the break. On the, we are going to talk NFC draft grades. We're going to start with the Dallas Cowboys, the best team in the NFC East, and work our way down. Right here on the Man Hour, guys, we will be right back right after this. And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Tori Anderson and the Wyatt Williams tonight. Brandon Combs is on assignment, working, getting ready to go to Wisconsin, actually. So hopefully safe travels for that man over there. But if you're going to miss any part of the show whatsoever, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio, and, of course, Amazon Music as well. Or you can find all the clips uploaded at youtube.com forward slash man hour each and every day throughout the day. We upload the clips from the segments, and bada bing, bada boom, they're there. So you can, so you, you can watch... Wyatt and basically say how good the Green Bay or the uh, Chicago Bears are over and over and over again. I don't know about that. For the next year and a half, if you guys go over there and subscribe to that. So, guys, the draft is well past us now. The it was the it was it, like it was Wyatt's Christmas. We had a live show here that uh, you can uh, you you can watch it on YouTube if you're in anywhere. I, but I the absolutely States, loved that. So. Can we do that every single year from now on? Like yeah, just but do I would like us for to do it like in person. Like I think that that would be a lot more we relax and a lot and a lot more fun. Like so. at the draft? No, 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 no. Like at somebody's house. Oh no, let's do it. No, let's do it at the draft. Let's do it at the draft, media. bro. We're if we're media. all gonna, if no, no, if we're, we're all going to travel, that's true. That's true. We could actually use our. That's one hundred percent true. We can get media passes. Um, I could actually help us out on that, like calling the front desk and stuff. Oh, um, why? Why are we flexing his ESPN connection? Yeah, it's not hey, that. Not not. That. It's not even that. What I'm talking about. <laughs> Jeez. No, yeah, but, but like we can we can we can order yeah. media passes and stuff. So I mean, if we're all going to travel anyways, if it's close by, yeah. no, it's in, it's in Vegas next year. It's, never it's mind. In Ve oh, absolutely, I'm down. It's <laughs> there in is Vegas there is no year. point for a guy like me who is under 21 to go to Vegas. Like I can't gamble, I can't drink, I I, I can just sit there and stare at the wall. That's all well, I can if do. If you try hard enough, you can do anything you want. <laughs> yeah. No, I cannot. My grandma would kill me. So. Uh, Nana, grandma, cover your ears. Nana your is muscle. watching. Nana yeah, is watching muscle, always. Nana. Your grandma per trusts me with your life, and she says if you can go, I will protect you with like you like my own son Wyatt. So like a baby, bad will fresh happen. out of the womb, yeah, nestled against my bosom. <laughs> you will only be <laughs> yeah. puking by. So fun fact, Buck. When, when are was, you gonna let? Go ahead. Was that fun fact? When my when I turned twenty one, my parents had me drunk, passed out, puking in bed by six p.m. Start drinking at five. I've heard that uh, story. So, <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great times. Oh my lord! No way. There we go. So, 
I'll let be there. Me, let me okay that with uh, with uh, Cindy, and I'll let you guys know uh, about two days before if, if I can go or not, because she'll stumble <laughs> around the answer and, like, until then. But let's go ahead and get into some draft talk, guys. I mean, obviously the draft is well past us here. We're already prepping for next year's draft. Wyatt is actually already working on his way too early uh, 2022 draft, which that will be coming out here on the, like on the Man Hour in a couple weeks. Here, you know, once uh, once the draft calms down and the NFL schedule calms down, then we'll start talking next year's draft. But this year's draft is still hot on the tail, and we are going to talk NFC East first. So we are going to grade all four teams in the NFC East, tell them who the best picks were and the worst picks were per each team. So so let's go ahead and start off. With the best team in the division, why I'm going to kick it to you first here. That that is the Dallas Cowboys. They they did finish uh, uh, six and ten last season. They did miss the playoffs by a half a game. Uh, you know that week 17 loss really really hurt them. Uh, but of course, you know Dak Prescott went down week three with that dislocated ankle, and they played with a, a third string and a fourth string quarterback for three or four weeks throughout the season yeah. as lag as well. But they they had the tenth overall pick very very first. But tell me why? Who was their best pick in their opinion, and why? Yeah, yeah, the best pick for them, uh, without a doubt, I think, and it's a runaway on this one for me is Micah Parsons, linebacker at Penn State. Uh, for where they got him as well, I really expected this guy to go barely outside of the top five, um, somewhere between six and ten, and he did slip to them all the way down. And I believe they were what they were ten, correct? 12, they traded back to 12. Oh, yeah, yeah they traded back to so that's right, that's right, that's right. I forgot so that. So they, they traded back to 12. They knew Micah was still going to be on the board, so they moved back, gained some picks, and still get the guy they want to add to that incredible, already incredible linebacker course. So uh, I think Micah Parsons out of Penn State, the linebacker, uh, who is incredibly athletic, fast, just a, a take your head off kind of linebacker, can work into coverage, can be on the run support side of things, can blitz off the edge, whatever you really need this guy to do. He's a Swiss Army knife in a linebacking position, which is scary. And uh, he adds to Leighton Vander Esch, who, if he was healthy, is a top linebacker in the league, and Jalen Smith, who is a top linebacker in the league. So adds to an already stout and incredible linebacking core. Yeah, and they and they and they did lose Sean Lee due to retirement yes. this this off this off season a couple days before the draft. So I'm not for sure if that transitioned their pick or not, but either way, they did replace Sean they, Lee on that defensive side. Yeah, they've already uh, got their next Sean Lee. It's it's Leighton Vander Esch. Yeah, so Tori. So you mean he's going to miss like all all season because Sean Lee Sean Lee retired and already probably played more snaps for the. Cowboys this year than he did well, the last three years. So, <laughs> so, so with the whole that addition said, by subtraction. With that being said, there, uh, Tori, who was your best pick in your eyes for the Dallas Cowboys this season in twenty twenty one NFL draft? For me, they had a deep linebacking core already, so I I, I didn't go Micah Parsons. Um, for me, it was Kelvin Joseph. They lost Byron Jones, you know, last year in free agency to the Dolphins. They were very thin and very weak at the corner position. They picked up Kelvin Joseph. That kind of solidifies that position. He's a he's a good sized corner. He's got great speed. Um, built in my eyes a lot like Byron Jones was. So if they can get the same kind of production out of Kelvin Joseph that they got out of Byron Jones, it's a it's an absolute steal of a pick for them. Yeah. So just so you, just so you guys know, Kelvin Jones was a cornerback out of Kentucky. They got them in the second round with the forty fourth overall pick. So you guys are you guys are giving me their first two picks as the best picks for the Cowboys this season. But Tori, I'm going to kick it to you first here. Who was their worst pick? This, so uh, not far behind those picks is Nashawn Wright, who is also another corner, very tall corner, six four cornerback. You know, you don't see many six four cornerbacks in the league. Um, he's got good speed, but the thing is, is they, they picked him about a round too early. He could have been, you know, about a fifth round pick and they, I think they took him in the fourth and he was the third. Yeah. He was their third, third third, third round, third round pick overall. Yeah. So he could have, he probably would have been there in the fifth round. So I do think that they, they reached quite a bit for him into a position that you already addressed. So if you thought you really highly of, of Kelvin Joe, of, what do you need Nishan Wright for? But there again, as they say, you can never have enough depth. So um, we'll, we'll see in the end. You know, they may convert him into a safety. Just with his size, I, I could see him maybe potentially getting converted into a safety. 
Yeah, and he was their fifth overall pick for the uh, for the Cowboys there, and they went seven straight picks on the defensive side of the, like lack like the ball, really adding depth to that defensive side. But why? Who was their uh, worst pick, or maybe stretch in your eyes? Well, I was going to go with uh, Nashawn Wright, so I. Tory literally covered everything that I was going to, you know, like he said, six, four corner. Uh, he's got the length, but you know, at the same time, he was one of the only corners coming into this draft. That, like you really hadn't heard much about. Uh, and, and like, like you said, they drafted Kelvin just before that. So there really wasn't a need for that. And it was a reach as well. They, they could have had him in later, later rounds than what they got him. So like I said, kind of doubling down on what Tory said because he nailed it, right, got the nail right on the head with the exact same player that I was going to pick here. Um, but yeah, Nashawn Wright uh, out of Oregon State, and he oh, and he also came out and said that um, he was going to be the next Richard Sherman, and that's not happening. So yeah, there you go. that's there yeah, you go. usually yeah. usually not the best thing in the world to say. The oh, thing yeah. is, is uh, why I don't like that pick is they still needed to address stuff with their offensive line, and I touched yeah. on that yesterday. They could have used that pick to pick up an offensive lineman because there were still a lot of really good linemen left at that point in the draft. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was the one thing that kind of threw a red flag to me was the Dallas Cowboys only drafting one offensive, offensive, offensive lineman, Josh Ball, out of uh, Marshall, I think it was, the thundering yeah. herd. They got him in the fourth round with the 130th overall overall pick. But but you realize that they've lost three offensive linemen from their stout offensive line. I mean, they they arguably had the best offensive line what just three years three ago. years ago, yeah. And then injuries and neck operations and back issues, you know that that, that makes the line really really thin, really really really, really quick. So so only getting one offensive lineman is kind of of like a, what are you guys doing there? I mean, like yes, I know the defense had issues, but the offensive line issue I had more issues because you if you would have had a better offensive line you may have had your starting quarterback all season. So why I want to kick you to you first here, given that the Cowboys had 11 draft picks this season and then went eight of them on the defensive side of the ball, what would you give their overall grade and why? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, you mentioned them, majority of the picks for them being on the defensive side of the ball and, you know, the defensive side of the ball being where most of the work needed to be done. So I will give them that. I will say, as for addressing their problems, I give them a solid B ranking somewhere in there. They could have went better on the offensive line, of course, especially on the offensive side. But when you look at the offensive side, there wasn't much need for tweaking because they've got one of the top offenses in the league. I mean, you know, and their offensive line, yes, they're old and hurt and stuff, but even at that rate, they're still one of the best offensive line. If you get Tyron Smith, Zach Martin, and all of them healthy and, and good to go for the season, they're going to be a top 10 O line. I mean, it's just, I don't care how old they are, how, you know, broken down they are over the years. They're just all studs. They're all incredible guys uh, on the football field. So, you, you know, as for addressing the offensive side of the ball, of course they should have gone more with the, um, you know, especially with some of the later round picks with getting some offensive line depth, maybe some guys to sit behind those guys that are currently in and learn more and then get eventually get tossed in. Um, but overall, I'd say it was a pretty average draft. I think they addressed a lot of issues that were needed. Um, I think they missed a lot of issues that were more important, but I think they did address some issues that were needed. So I give them right an average, a, a C. Uh, so, Tori, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't um, uh, Tyron uh, retire this year because of the neck issue that he was having? Um, I don't know if he retired or not. One of them Was it Lyle Collins? I can't. I can't Lyle Collins, yeah. yeah Lyle, Lyle Collins, Collins retired. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Zach Martin I was gonna say was... and him still there. So Lael yeah. Collins and Travis Frederick are both gone. Travis left yeah. season. Or that's, yeah, Fredericks is who I was thinking of. Yeah. So well, he, you... he retired because of the Bears syndrome, that gear, Bears, <laughs> whatever it is syndrome. Yeah. But uh, which is pretty sad to see because he was one of the top centers in the game, right. and Absolutely. he's a Badger. Uh, so why you gave us two grades there? You gave us a B and a C. So which one do you yeah. to stick with? That's, no, that's no, I, w- I was saying as for like addressing their problems and stuff, I would give them a B. But I mean, as an overall grade, they get a C. They were average on the gotcha. on the whole draft. Overall, it was a C. They, I mean, they addressed some problems they needed, but they didn't address some of the the larger problems they needed, and they addressed some problems more than they should have, like cornerback. So C equals championship in my books. Tori, what would you give them? <laughs> so. I mean, Wyatt was actually probably harsher on him than I was, and I probably hate Dallas more than he does. But my biggest thing is their grade for me would have been a little bit higher had they addressed a little bit more of the offensive line. 
I think they probably should have took two or three offensive linemen just to kind of see, you know, what's going to work, who do we got that's going to fit our system and so forth. So I rated them at a C plus. So um, they're, they didn't do anything spectacular. They didn't do anything terrible. You know, it was it, even the Sean Wright, it's kind of nitpicking at that point. So uh, you got to you gotta take it all with a grain of salt and, and look at their entire body of work. Yes, they – they resolved their defensive issues, but they still did. To me, they neglected that offensive line issue just a little bit too much. If they would have took another lineman or or, or two, I, they probably would have been a B or a B plus in my book. All righty there. So let's go ahead and move on to the next team here as I switch views here. Uh, the Washington football team is is next up here on the list. They did go 7-9 and nine, uh, in the 2020 season. They did make the playoffs, but, but then they did lose in the first round to the eventual Super Bowl champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, they they did pick up a, a, a quarterback in the offseason, and they uh, uh, signed Henneke to a two-year deal and also releasing Alex Smith. So th- so they kind of had a had a quarterback conundrum happening over there in like in Washington, D.C. But, Tori, I'm going to kick it to you first since you are top there on the uh, uh, screen. Who was their best pick? Uh, for me, it was Diami, Diami Brown. They picked up a dynamic receiver in what the third round. Um, this kid was probably should have went a lot higher in this draft. Um, I was I was kind of had my eye on him, and I was kind of hoping the Packers would have took him in the second round. But he was one of those guys that I just kept watching fall, fall, fall. I'm like, is he going to go into free fall mode? Or he's not. And then um, obviously the Washington football team stopped his free fall. And uh, to me, that's going to be a great pickup for him. It's a great running mate to go up on the other side of, uh, of Tracy McLaurin. So uh, I absolutely love that pick. I think it's a great pick for them. Yeah, the Washington football team has a very young, good nucleus together there on the defensive side, and they're building on the offensive side as well. Uh, so why? who was their best pick in this year's draft, in your opinion? Oh, I think it's Jameen Davis, a linebacker out of Kentucky, their first round pick. Uh, he is going to go down as a top five player in this draft. If you go watch his highlight tape in college, there is no reason uh, for anybody in the top 10 not to give him a look, except for if you needed a quarterback. I mean, I think that's the only reason why I wouldn't have given him a look. If I already knew my guy was going to be there and I was going to go quarterback, then I would have gone quarterback. Uh, Jimmy Davis, if you look at his college, like I said, if you look at his college tape, it's outstanding. He comes off the edge screaming. Uh, he can drop back into coverage very well, uh, as well as he provides a really good run support uh, on the outside. So I think he's going to be a really good NFL player, a top five player. And they got him at what pick nineteen, so yep. got him at a steal. Yeah. So so uh, you have kind of gone safe 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 picks here on your uh, two top picks, you know, being first round picks and all. So with that, with that being said, the Washington football team, they did have, you know, 10 draft picks here, but who was their worst pick in pickup in your eyes? Well, and see, this one was tough simply because I think that the Washington football team had one of the best drafts of everybody out there. Um, so I, I went with John Bates tight end Boise state because they've already got a good tight end, I, that good two tight ends. That's really the only reason why I even chose that, but it's still a good pick. It adds some tight end depth. At the end of the day, uh, Washington had one of the top drafts, so it's really tough to kind of sit down and pick which players uh, that they went wrong with here because I, I guess if I had to choose maybe John Bates, maybe that there was somebody else there that they could have went with, um, but I was very impressed by Washington, uh, Rivera, and, every, and everything that they did on draft day. Yeah, and just to add to your point there, the tight end position was very, very thin in this year's draft. It was basically the fourth overall, fourth overall pick and nobody else so (laughs) and second and third rounders (laughs) yeah so so taking a tight end in a fourth and the fourth round may have been a stretch for any team but Tori who was your worst pick for the Washington football team so one for I'm gonna I'm gonna quantify this by saying I love this guy's name and I hope he gets cut and Green Bay picks him up Cameron Cheeseman so they picked a freaking long snapper granite a lot of people don't realize how specialized the long snapper position is. Very important. And when you get a good one, you just don't let him go because they're very, very hard to find. However, a lot of teams do not actually draft a long snapper specifically, and they did. And to me, that's just kind of a wasted pick. The guy probably was going undrafted, 
and I think they took him in the fifth round. I don't know. There, there was what three? There was three long snappers that went got drafted this year. Carolina got one. They got one, and I think who's the other one? There was one other team I think that got a long snapper this year. And they drafted. Uh, Carolina drafted a kicker in the fifth round too. I think. A like kicker, I can see uh, if they're yeah, leg I, is I get big enough. Ki- like I can I see a kicker. I, I, I get long snapper. I think it's a very important position because you know. If you don't know who the long snapper is, that's a good thing. If you do know who it is, that means that he has oversnapped the punter, oversnapped the holder, and he is screwed up. Right. But if you don't know who he is, most of the time when you draft a long snapper, you never know their name after draft day. And it's a great thing because that means they do their job perfectly. Right. You're supposed to be agree with me. We, we hope he gets cut and he comes to Green Bay. Yes, yes. Just because his yes. last name is Cheeseman. Yes, I hope he gets cut and has the greatest long snapping career of all time with the Green Bay Packers. Absolutely. So... so- <laughs> I, I just think that was a. Re- I think it was a reach at that point, though. Yeah, I mean, a, he he was a six six sixth round two hundred twenty fifth pick. So, how much of a reach really was that? I mean, you I mean you. I mean, I guess you. Could I mean, you probably thirty two more picks and let him go down. Even I guess. yeah, even even that. I was going to say even with that, you know, you bring him as an undrafted free agent. You're probably still saving yourself probably fifty grand just on the signing bonus. I was. I, I think. I think Carolina picked their long snapper at 222 in the sixth round. It was something like that. So, Tori. Well, when we get to Carolina for picks, you can put him on your worst draft pick. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tori, with you giving us your best pick and your worst pick, what is your grade for the Washington football team in this year's 2021 draft? Literally what brought their draft grade down for me is that Cameron Cheeseman pick. That's the only thing that brought They had a super good draft. They had a really solid draft. They had a really good draft. Um, I actually gave them a B overall, and it's like they would have been a B plus, maybe an A minus, had it not been that you drafted a long snapper. So I will tell you, every team that drafted a long snapper automatically loses almost half a grade just because so, of, for drafting a long. So snapper. you're giving them a B plus or a B? I'm giving them a B. A B. All righty, why? What are you grading them? I give them an A. Like I said earlier, I think that they had one of the best drafts uh, across the board. Like I said. It was such a hard pick to pick their worst pick. And if I had to go with somebody, it was John Bates because they already had Thomas at tight end. Um, but still, they added the tight end depth. You know, they got Jameen Davis, a big steal there, a uh, big first round steal. Uh, he's a guy that's going to be really good in the league. So, I mean, I, I can't complain. I, 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 give, I give him an A on this. It's the only A I'm going to give throughout the NFC East. So, B, before we move on to the next two teams here, let me ask you guys a quick question here. They did not draft a quarterback in this year's draft. Are they sold on Henneke, or do you think Fitz, Fitz Magic is a starter for the whole season? I think it's a totally different direction. I think they're waiting till next year. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. I think they're waiting to see next year's quarterback class. It's supposed to be four or five deep again. They probably have a little bit better chance at one of the other ones. Just because this one was – there could be potentially up to four probably generational talents in this one that can – really change a franchise. The only one I'm not throwing in there is Zach is trash. All righty. So let's move on to the next team here. Uh, We have the New York football giants. They went six and 10 last year as well, along with the Cowboys. They did miss the playoffs. Shaykhan Barkley got hurt the first game of the season, basically making, uh, I think the New York football giants team better and more well-rounded going on to the 21 season. But we will talk about that when the schedule comes out and we make our way too early early predictions here. But, Wyatt, who was the best draft pick for the New York Giants? Yeah, so here you go. You guys wanted me to not go with a first rounder, so here it is. Bang, bang. Um, second rounder, Aziz Ojolari, defensive end out of Georgia. Uh, the guy was projected to be a first round pick. A great defensive end. Tore it up in the SEC. Uh, he had quarterbacks legitimately running away from him, uh, and I love his name, Aziz Ojolari. Can't go wrong with that one, right? But, you know, he's a good, really good defensive end, and I think he's going to be a great player in this draft. And once again, a steal. He should have been the first rounder. I had him in a couple of my mocks throughout the year going uh, in in the first round, late first round. Uh, and I think he's another guy that has the potential to be uh, a, a top 10 player in this draft. And like I said, they got him in the second round, so a, a big steal there for him. Yeah, they got him in the mid second round as fiftieth overall pick, so definitely a steal. Uh, you know, dropping out of the first for first round here. But Tory, who do you have uh, as your best pick for the uh, New York Football Giants? So, I really didn't pick a player. I have them them trading down twice and picking up all the additional picks 
is their best draft pick. They got all that additional capital. They've traded down twice. They still got the players that they targeted and that they wanted. I cannot fault that whatsoever. Just because the Giants had, to me, had probably the second best draft behind the Cleveland Browns in this draft. So trading down, like, Tori, that is why I like you, just because you think outside the box, and that is a great answer because very, very few people are going to realize, like, they traded down twice to, to, to get three or four or four more picks when they only have, like... If three, you know anything about David years. Gettleman, he usually trades up. He's been known to trade up. He's never has traded down until this year, and he made two great moves, with, and the very first one within his own division. Right. So... With that being said, who was the worst pick from the New York Giants, Tori? I don't have one because their draft was that great. As I said, their draft addressed every single need that they had. They are a team that literally it'll hinge this year on Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones takes a step forward, you're looking at a really good young team for about the next five or six years. If he doesn't take a step forward, you're looking at them drafting in the top 10 again next year and probably taking one of the quarterbacks. So, Outside of that, I think they addressed every other need they had. They went after all the players that they needed. The only thing I really didn't think they needed, the one thing I was like, oh, what do they need a receiver for? What did they do in the first round? They got a receiver. So um, they they proved me wrong at every point, and I, the more I look at their draft class, the more I'm impressed I am with it. I They did not do anything wrong in this draft in my book. Yeah, and I think uh, Tooney was probably the steal of the draft. I think he has the most upside as receiver in the uh like in this year's draft class so why who was the giants worst pick in your eyes man you guys are gonna hate me for this one Kadarius tony wide receiver out of florida um sim- yes i i i don't mind Kadarius. i think Kadarius is a good wide receiver i just don't think he's i think he's a little overhyped i don't think that at 20 that was the pick rashad bateman would have been a better pick right there um and he was still on the board as well as i think not only do i think that it was the wrong wide receiver um, I think I think that it was too high to pick Kadarius. Like, even if there was a better receiver option, I think Kadarius is pot. We, I mean, we saw Elijah Moore and all of them slip into the second round. I think Kadarius Tony had some potential to slip into the second round. So, I like I said, I think I think Rashad Bateman um, was a better option right there. Uh, I think that you know. I- I like it. Like I said, I like Kadarius Tony. I just think that it was a little too high for Kadarius, and I also think that it was the wrong wide receiver. Uh, so be, before we give our draft grade, Drew comes up and says that they didn't draft any offensive linemen. They're leaving everything on Danny Dimes' sh- or shoulders, which they which they honestly they should. I mean, everything falls on your quarterback's shoulders. But they had a pretty good offensive line, anyways. Like there was really no holes to fill on that. Yeah, they didn't line. have their offensive line was actually pretty solid last year. Yeah, yeah it was decent. Um, the only the the only reason why Shaquan got hurt is just is just a freak accident you know like yeah. sometimes your ligaments give like just give way and things happen uh it's just wear and tear on the body as the uh tory i believe you are the one that says there's a lot of tread on those tires or not or not not a lot of or not a lot of tread on those tires isn't that your little saying yeah usually yeah. it's uh, either it works either way yep. so with that being said wyatt what grade would you give them man me and me and tory are gonna go polar opposites here Tori's going to go somewhere on the A or B range. I'm going D. I was really, at the prospects where they got all of them, I was really not impressed. I thought the best pick they had, and it was really, in my opinion, the only pick that was a B-plus pick, was Aziz, Ojo- Aziz Ojulari. I think that was really that was really the only one that caught my eye, and I was like, wow, hey, that was a good pick. You know, I, I do agree they had a good offensive line last year. I still think they could have addressed a couple of issues on the offensive line. Um, but, you know, I, I really, I, you know, I liked that they traded back. I think it was good that they stacked up on some picks, but I think they went with way wrong with the wide receiver. Um, I think they went way wrong with, you know, which wide receiver it was and, and where they drafted that wide receiver. So if they were looking for Kadarius Tony. Then they should have traded down even further. I mean, they they like I said, they could have got Kadarius Tony probably at the thirty spot, thirty two spot, maybe even into the second round. It it, it all depends. So I, I I give him a D. Well, on the opposite side, that why I am going to de- to defend the Giants a little bit. When you when you have your guy and you want your guy and he falls into your lap, you have to pick your guy. So I'm not faulting them for that whatsoever. Uh, so, Tori, what do you uh, give them grade-wise? 
So first, I'm going to give Wyatt a D's nuts because a D is way too low. <laughs> so, um, no, they had a great draft. They traded back. They picked up another first rounder next year. So the based off that alone, they they're getting an A. They you can't give them anything but an A. They addressed their needs. They made their football team way better. And they pick up another first rounder for next year. Where where do you give them a? You can't give them a D. I'll tell you what. That's I, like I, saying, I, I'll 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 give them a C. I'll give them a C because you're right. They did collect a pick for next year. So I will I will you I will correct myself. I will move it to a C. So you so you are basing your grade from what Tori said because they picked a a pickup for next year. No, I'm just saying, like, it, it, I, I, like I said a minute ago, I do, I do think that it was good that they had traded down and stuff. I, right. I did like those moves. Uh, I think those were good moves. And Aziza Joel Ojulari, I miss that every single time I mess that up. Um, you know, so I, I don't think that was a bad pick. So I'll tell you what, I, I'll, I'll give him a C minus. All right, so C minus. So we've a. had a D, a C, and a C minus. Which one is it, Waffles? It's a C, it's, C minus. Uh, it's all it's the same. You know, what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Jesus. D equals diploma, guys. D equals diploma. That's, that is all we need to know. D's get degrees, man. baby. <laughs> so, moving Double on Double D's to- get A's. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Love it. So, with the worst Jesus. team in the NFC East last season, you do have the 4-11-1 Philadelphia Eagles. They obviously did miss the playoffs last season, having the worst record in the division, and they also cut ties with Tarson. Carson Wentz, a top 15 quarterback in the NFL. But, they did move up to the tenth spot, right? Guys, yeah. So they 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 traded with the Dallas Cowboys. They moved up two spots in the draft. So Tori, I'm going to give it to you first. Who was their best pickup in this year's draft? Hands down, Devonta Smith. It can't be anybody else besides Devonta Smith. Yeah. That wide receiving core is so decimated by injuries. Has been so rattled and so torn apart. They had to go receiver. Like literally, there was no other pick. You just took whatever receiver fell to you. When you hit, when your pick came, and they're again, and they they traded up with the Giants, so they made they went up and they made sure for sure that they got their guy. So I can't fault them for that at all. Hands down, Devonta Smith, and I think he would have fell to them in the twelfth, twelfth, twelfth spot. But you never know. No. You may like 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 we see a bunch no of way. smoke and mirrors and stuff happening. But why? Who is your best pick for the Philadelphia? Eagles? No, I I agree one hundred percent because if they would have stayed at twelve, the Giants would have taken him right there, without a doubt. I can promise you that right now. Um, that was the lowest that ten or eleven was the lowest that Devonta Smith was going to go. There was no lower than that he was going to go, and the Giants are sitting there with their mouths watering. They got their hands open, and then all of a sudden they're caught with their pants down. The the Eagles come swooping in, get get the reference there, swoop, uh, come swooping in, and make a great pick in my opinion. I think it, and it, I, it like Tori said, there's nowhere else you can go with this. I mean, it was the best pick the Eagles had by far, and it's not even close. And I think it's a top five pick of uh, the first round. I think it was a great pick for them. Like like he said, the the receiving core horrible. I mean, they they need help everywhere and anywhere they can get it. Um, you know, Greg, Greg Ward showed some signs of being okay this year. You had like Travis Fulgham was okay this year, but nobody really stood out as, you know, anything crazy. You know, even, even the rookie they got last year, why Rager, Jalen Rager, um, you know, he was still riddled with injuries last year. Couldn't really do anything. And I still think he's a good wide receiver, but I think it's a great pick. It adds to the wide receiver core that they needed. Um, and I think that they had a really good, and this is kind of my honorable mention in a way. I, if they didn't go with Devonta Smith, I wanted to mention Landon Dickerson also as well was it was a good pick uh, that they had I, in the um, second round. I, I, I was kind of torn on on, yeah. on both of those picks because I was like, God, Landon Dickerson was a really good pick in the second round too. So, but wide receivers, their biggest need, they're they were a walking mash unit. Yeah, and I think, but I think that they solved a lot of offensive line stuff as well throughout this draft. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, just to add to Drew's point point here, uh, Hertz and Smith did did play together in college at Alabama. I believe they won a national championship together as well. There were a total of five college and uh, receivers that played together that are now on the same team in the NFL, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so if you guys yeah. would correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, but Wyatt, we like we always talk about the best, and we always got to talk about the worst. And uh, the, the Philadelphia Eagles are riddled with worst picks and worst worst records in the NFC. 
So with that being said, who is their worst draft draft pick? Yeah, I think that their worst draft pick was uh, Milton Williams, defensive end out of Louisiana Tech. Uh, I wasn't really very, um, you know, excited with this guy's tape. Wasn't really excited with where he went, what he did. Um, you know, he was an RA defensive end in college. Uh, he was a solid, solid, okay pick for them. I still think there was a lot of better picks that they made. This is really the only pick that I, I kind of didn't understand for him because they've already got Ingram. You know, they've already got a solid enough defensive line. I think they've got plenty of other issues they needed to go after with that early of a pick to go after him. Wasn't really impressed with it. So if I, if I had to pick a bad pick, I think that's really the only one. Except and for the second time they went defensive Wentz. end in this draft too. And letting go of someone once as a horrible pick, but we'll, put to, we'll address that later. Tori, worst pick of so, the Eagles. I went with Marlon Tupaluto. The guy's a defensive lineman, stronger than an ox, but doesn't do anything. He's not great at rushing the passer. He is not great at stuffing the run. He's just really good at holding up a block, and that's about it. Um, he doesn't have he doesn't have very good lateral movement. He's a he's a straight line guy, and if you're going to be a straight line defensive lineman with all that strength, you better be able to rush the passer, and he can't do that. So I really struggled to see what his fit on that defensive line is going to be unless they think for whatever reason they can teach him another direction than straight ahead. Yeah, and the Eagles also drafted two different tackles and do two defensive ends in this year's draft, so that kind of kind of was a head-scratcher to me, uh, but I'm not the one making the judgments here. You guys are. Tori, what, what, what did you grade the Philadelphia Eagles? Uh, overall, I gave them a B. Just because they're again, they addressed a ton of their needs. The big one, obviously, being wide receiver. You know, they needed to find somebody to be that number one target. And we talked about this a little bit on draft night. And I think it was, I do believe it was Drew that brought that up. Is you're starting to see a lot of these quarterback wide receiver combos in the NFL that were combos in the in the college game as well. Right. So Devonta Smith, Jalen Hurts played together. You know, a couple of years ago. You know, it very well could be. It could be one of those things. It could be that security blanket. It could be that they already have chemistry. So I uh, I really like their draft. Uh, outside of the Marlon Tupa, Tupaluto, and I, it took me about three hours to figure out how to his, say his name, so I'm going to say it as many times as I can. Um, <laughs> I, gave him, I gave him a B. Yeah, you guys keep raving about the Devontae Smith, but, guys, he's only six foot tall and 160 pounds. He's not going to last very, very long in the NFL, especially with the Eagles because, you know, the two was tell that to Deshaun Jackson. No, no, tell that to Deshaun tell Jackson. That to Steve tell, Smith. That, tell that to T.Y. Hilton. Tell that, tell that to Tyreek Hill, your own guy. Tyreek Hill is not a very good receiver without Patrick Mahomes. But rolling, oh my rolling, with, with, rolling with my Mahomes. Weapon is a weapon. Uh, with that being said, Wyatt, I mean, I'm going to get so drunk tonight. <laughs> Draft grade. <laughs> I give him a B as well. I agree with Tori. I think they addressed a lot of needs, um, and I think that Devonta Smith falling to them was was huge for them, as well as Landon Dickerson with that second pick. Landon was a guy that could possibly go in the first round. I think that he was a decent pick. Um, there at the second round, I think that it was really cool for them to be able to get him whenever a lot of teams liked him in that first round, but somehow he fell. So B. All right, so you guys got both Bs for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles here. But it is time to take our next break. On the other side of the break, we're going to dive into the NBA a little bit here. Why Williams is going to tell us who's hot and who's not. NBA edition playoffs are just around the corner. Why won't they? Two weeks away? Yeah, something like that. So, yeah, so close. It's getting close, and uh, LeBron James is getting butt hurt more and more and more each and every day. So Le-bum. he's quickly... Falling from my goat status, to be honest with you, just because it's, it's, it's his antics. LeBron! LeBron! Ridiculous. We'll be back here, guys, on the Man Hour. Have fun. We'll be back.
check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buck has along with Tori Anderson and the Wyatt Williams tonight. You can find us at Man Hour underscore Buck, Man Hour underscore TWW, and of course, Man Hour underscore Tori, all active on the Twitter machines every now and then. Me and Tori are active, more active than Wyatt and Collins put together single handedly, but we'll address that another day because their Twitter game is weak, much like the Philadelphia's schedule this season. Pretty weak because they had the worst, one of the worst records in the NFL. But the NBA playoffs is right around the corner here, and we have some teams that are getting hot and some teams that are just kind of uh, starting to shoot the shit uh, right in their buttholes into the toilet. With that being said, Wyatt, who's hot right now in the NBA? Yeah, who's hot? My first team uh, starting it off, the Miami Heat. They are 7-3 and three out of their last 10. Uh, Jimmy Butler is kind of getting the team back on strides. He is what's going to have to lead this team uh, if they're going to do absolutely anything at any point in this playoffs. Uh, and they're currently sitting at 6 in the East, so just outside of that play-in tournament, they're just inside of having a guaranteed spot. And pretty much in the East, if you're in, you got a shot at it right now because there's really only one top-heavy team. You've at least got a shot at going to the... Uh, Eastern Conference Finals and, and competing to go to the finals. So, um, in in a in a division where it is or not a division, excuse me, in a conference where you can get yourself to the finals the easiest rather than the West. Uh, they are currently starting to get things together. Like I said, seven wins out of their last ten. It's currently sixth in the East. So why? Let me ask you this quick quick, quick question here. The NBA playoffs are a tad bit different this year with the 7 through 10 teams having to play in a single round or a single game to basically make it into the tournament here. It is like yeah, they, a, did, um, they did it last year too. Well, but like the COVID season you just kind of just throw it out like it was just basically just to make money at the at the at the at the at the end of the day. But if you are the Miami Heat would you almost rather be the seven seed and kind of get that first playoff game like under your belt and get into the playoffs and then you know the six seed and kind of just like hanging around because because looking at the uh, standings right now and let me pull 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 it up it, it looks like they might be playing like the Atlanta Hawks in the first first round. Do you think they can even have a shot with the Atlanta Hawks? Yeah, oh, definitely. I think they have a shot with the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, and honestly, no, I don't think they want to be in that playing tournament. There's a lot of teams that could benefit from it, uh, getting that extra game in to kind of get themselves ready. But the Heat, after dealing with all the injuries, with dealing with all the um, just everything going on with them right now, dealing with all that, they they don't need any more help right now. If they can get into the tournament, uh, that that would be huge for them and for them to move in. So I actually miss misspoke here. Uh, it looks like they'll be playing the Bucks in the first round. I was going to say your, your Milwaukee. Yeah, Bucks. I was like, your I was about to say cause, Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, I was about to say because I was like, I was like, aren't they the sixth seed? I was like, I I'm think like, the, the Hawks are the, the fifth seed. Bucks are the three seed right now. Did we take overtake the two seed? Because <laughs> we did just beat Wyatt's NBA champion pick of the net. So I did not pick them to win at all. I am going to the finals. That's it. I get the okay, Lakers so, winning it all. They'll, they'll get it all back together. Who else is hot for you, Wyatt? Who else is hot? Well, leave no other answer than right here. Drew says Knicks. I'll tell you what, Drew. You're 100% correct. The Knicks are currently 9-1 and one in the last 10. And this is the second time in a row they've been 9-1 and one in, the la- in their last 10. Uh, they're fourth in the East, and they're in a really good spot. And they're playing really good basketball right now. And it is like I, it's, it's like a Knicks team that... I've never seen before. I don't. It didn't make sense. Uh, and and if for the first time, I think in my life, I can actually say the Knicks have a shot at going a shot at going to the finals with LeBron out of the East, with Jordan out of the East, and they've got a decent team now. I, I mean, I, I'll give it to them. They've done a really good job of drafting. RJ starting to come full swing. Kevin Knox starting to come full swing. Uh, Julius Randle is a completely different animal. I mean, it's almost like he's not even the same player as what he was. I, I saw a poll the other day that, that they took at a Lakers game between Kyle Kuzma, Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, and Julius Randle whenever they were all there in, in Lakerland. And it was like, which of these do you think will be the most successful? And I think Lonzo Ball had the most votes than... Um, uh, after that, you know, what all went down, but like, I think only Ju- Julius Randle got the least amount of votes with 8%. And it's like, boys, everybody kicking themselves now because he turned out to be the best of all of them. But you know, Julius Randle playing out of his mind right now and the team is falling right behind him. So they're playing really good basketball, uh, nine and one fourth in the East sitting in a really good spot. They are nine and one in their last 10, 
But looking at their schedule moving forward, they play the Memphis Grizzlies, the Denver Nuggets, the Suns, the Clippers, and then the and then the Lakers here in the next week and a half. So it it, it all could come and come cre- come crashing back down to reality pretty soon here, right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely, I, it could. I'm just trying to figure out. You said the Knicks have a shot. So then you mentioned Jordan. Jordan hasn't been in the league for over 20 years. Yeah, I know. And the Knicks haven't had a shot in over 20 years. Actually, though, during that era, they went to the finals with Ewing and all them. Did they win? They did not win. <laughs> they did not win, but they made a finals. They did. Uh, and wasn't it the year that Jordan set out, right? Yeah, what, a, what it was after he retired. So they, yeah, because yeah, they lost to so the, they, they, the, they the Knicks lost to, to the Rockets. Because they didn't have to see. I mean, that, that's what I was trying to get. They, they don't have to worry about Jordan, and then they had to worry about LeBron in the East, too. So that well, they do. Well, they I was referencing your generation, they, too, Tori. They, All right? they have never been good since LeBron's been in the league, though. Yeah. Oh, they, <laughs> no, they had a couple of years with Carmelo and, like, D. Rose and J. When J.R. Smith, you know, was smoking at least a little less weed. Derrick Rose so. was in Chicago when those guys were still in New York. And Joakim, Joakim Noah was there, too. No, they had, a little, they had a little bit of time where they all played together. Yeah. No, it, 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 D. Rose. What, one season? Two no, seasons? I don't think D Rose was ever there when they were all D- there. D Rose might have missed him, but I know Carmelo was, and I know J.R. Smith was, Mel- and I know Joaquin Mello was. Jr. And, and Joaquin were there, but they were never they were never a serious threat ever. Like they were going to make the playoffs, but they were never. You know, they would win fifty games every year and get bounced in the second round. Yeah, but yeah, uh, no. Why, that's so what. who who is your last team that is hot? Yeah, so my last team also going nine and one out of their last ten, out of their last ten. Excuse me, uh, they're third in the West. That's going to be the Denver, the Denver Nuggets. They have handled this injury of Jamal Murray, which I thought was going to be the end of their season, and it still essentially is going to be. You know, because without him, that's a huge piece they're missing, and they won't be the same team without him. Um, so, you know. I, I, I am very impressed with the way they've handled the injury with him being out for the rest of the year. Joker is really stepping it up, and I really think that he is solidifying himself as the MVP if Steph Curry does not win it because, you know, you know what they say. you got to you know be top four to, to win an MVP. Of course, I don't know why, but you do. Steph Curry definitely deserves it. But anyways, Joker will probably get it. And, uh, yeah, 9-1 and one out of their last 10. Third in the West, putting themselves in a really good spot to uh, lose to a sixth seed in the West. You know, you say that Joker has has like has kind of stepped up in like leading this leading this 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 team, but I think the unsung hero for this team in the last couple of games at least has been Michael Porter Jr. Like I didn't think this guy was going to manifest much to be in the, much in the NBA after his uh, when he had back surgery in college, right, and sat pretty much out the whole. Yeah, he had some like, he had some back injuries and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, I think he only played what eight games at Missouri his entire time while there, and still was yeah. a lottery pick. You know, uh, M- M- MPJ is a really good player. And it, and if injuries could get away from him, he'd be really good. He would be a sensational well, he's, he's player. Playing pretty good now. Right? Yeah, he the thing is. is but, if you watch the if you watch the playoffs last year, though, he that was his coming out party last year in the playoffs. He had a really good playoff run last year. So yeah. it's all just kind of starting to come together on a more consistent basis with him these days. Yeah. All right. So he's starting why, to kind of change together. So just to review here, your three hot teams in the NBA right now are the Nuggets, Knicks, and, of course, the Miami Heat. The Heat are hot, yep. Do any of them make a finals run? No. No? Okay. So let's go ahead and move on to the opposite side of Heat. Uh, It's cold. Who is cold? Well, starting it off, uh, third third coldest team out there right now uh, is going to be the Portland Trailblazers. Five and five out of their last ten. Only you know the not good splitting, especially this time of the year, especially where they're sitting at two six in the West. You've got to get this together uh, because if you don't, you're going to be facing a play-in tournament. It's that simple. Uh, so the Trailblazers currently sitting in six in the West. Uh, Dame, you know, I don't, I don't know what it is. They just can't piece together a bunch of wins. They're kind of struggling over their last ten. You know, they've had five good wins, but also five losses to kind of drag it down as well. So uh, nothing too impressive from them so far. Right on the bright side for them is that the Lakers are kind of a duck on the pond. They are may look calm, calm on the surface, but they are a sinking ship right now. LeBron James has basically said that he he will never be healthy ever again, and then that. Um, the guy uh, Schroeder, right? Uh, he is out for 14 days for the whole COVID protocol. So right now they they don't have a healthy shooting guard on their lineup. So hopefully that will help the Trailblazers out a little bit going forward here. 
who is next on your cold list? Yeah, next is going to be uh, – we're heading back to the east here. That's going to be the Atlanta Hawks. They're 5-5 five and five out of the last 10, the exact same. Currently sitting at fifth in the east. They've dropped back from fourth to fifth now. Uh, you know, And the Hawks are a team where – they could become a threat in the playoffs. They could have one of those runs. They've got a solid enough lineup. I don't I don't think they will, but they are definitely a team that could do it uh, for sure. So Atlanta is a good team. They've got Trey. Uh, he is a wild shooter. I mean, a wild shooter. He knocks down everything once he crosses the half-court line uh, and a stout roster around him behind that. So um, could be playing better, not playing better. Like same, same situation as the Trailblazers. One had five good wins, but also five losses that are really dragging him down as well. Yeah, I think the Hawks are probably the uh, most overrated team right now in the playoff pitcher. They could easily be like an eight, like an eight or nine seed and, and, not, and, uh, and lose that first round uh, playing game. They just do not look good right now at all. The Hawks, the Hawks need a coach. They need a coach that can actually bring that team together because yeah. – I don't know what they're doing there. This team has way too much talent to be as bad as they are. Exactly. All right, who is next on your cold list, White? Well, my my most cold team of the league. I don't think it's any surprise here. Uh, they're three and seven in their last ten. They're seventh in the West right now. Just dropped out of it, and uh, it's going to be the Lakers. I mean, they are struggling, struggling, and LeBron just came back from injury and still struggling. Anthony Davis comes back from injury, and what happens? He gets dunked on first play right into the game. So it's like, geez, where, where have these chumps been? And they show up, and they're not playing good at all. Then you mentioned Schroeder's going to be out for a little bit. Um, the roster, the talented roster, is just really not performing to the level that it should be. You know, Montrez Harrell and company tried to hold down the fourth day best they could. Caruso had a sick dunk uh, last night. I loved it, but at the same time, sick dunks don't generate wins. Ask so, Vince Carter about that. So let me ask you this question here. We saw Combs posted a quote of of, Le, of LeBron James at this time last year Jesus. and this time this year. Basically, he's saying the playing games are absolutely stupid. Yes. Right now, the Lakers are on a downward trajectory to be in those playoff games. Yep. With LeBron James coming out and saying that, saying, saying that they're stupid, if the Lakers are in the playoff game, is their season over with? No, no, definitely not. I, I even even if they enter as a seven seed, I still think they win it all. I mean, I, who who's currently the ten uh, that they would ch- play? It's the Spurs at ten. No, they Warriors would they wouldn't play nine. the ten. They'd play the eight, wouldn't they? Yes. No, so, they'd, so, no, they they no, would play no, the no, ten. No. You're right. You're right. You're right. Seven, no, ten, no. eight, nine. No, 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 no. It's ten versus nine, and the and then the winner of that plays a loser of seven and eight. And then the and so the winner of the seven seven and seven and eighth game get the seventh seed, and then the winner of the ninth so, so here, will 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 play the eighth for the eighth seed. So, so the the Western Conference play in tournament right now is the Lakers, Grizzlies, Warriors, and Spurs. So Lakers seven, Grizzlies eight, Warriors nine, Spurs ten. Man, I told you guys last week on who's hot, who's not. The Spurs were going to start dropping, and the Pelicans sitting two games behind them right now look hungry. Pelicans are like I said they they are they have 29 wins the Spurs have 31 they are just two short 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 games right behind that and if you allow the Pelicans in the Pelicans can seriously make it to that 8 seed I think the Pelicans could beat the Spurs and then beat um either the Grizzlies or the Warriors whoever it may be in that spot so I think they have a real shot at doing that they might have a real shot of making it, but they are not going to make it past the first round. Let's just be flat out honest. So they're just basically wasting all their talent and, 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 and like picks at the end of the day, right? No. No? I'm not? just kidding. No. Spur, Spurs haven't done anything since Tim Duncan was there. Just that simple. I was talking about the Pelicans. No. At the, like at oh, the Pelicans? Pelicans the playoffs, so Sorry, I thought you were talking about Spurs. Time. No, no. You're, if you're talking about the Pelicans, yes, then I agree with you. I, I think that they are definitely wasting the talent that they have right now, not playing to the capability they have. I mean, you've got Brandon Ingram, one of the top young players in the league. You've got Zion, Zion Williamson, arguably the f- future face of this league. You've got uh, Lonzo Ball, who is... I mean, the best IQ basketball player in the league that isn't named LeBron James right now. So, right. and he might even be more basketball IQ than LeBron James. I doubt it. Maybe um, he's one or two, though. That's for sure. And for as young as he is, he's a great passer. The three ball is really developing for Alonzo Ball right now as well. Uh, so, yes, you're 100% right. There is absolutely no excuse for this Pelicans team to be struggling at the way they are. 
All righty, guys. So that is the NBA Who's Hot and Who Is Not Wyatt Williams edition. We're going to take a quick little break. On the other side of the break, we have Tori Anderson, the man, the myth, the legend himself, is going to give us Major League Baseball Who's Hot and Who's Not. And then after that, guys, we're going to jump back into the NFL Draft Talk. We're going to break down more of the NFC Draft Talk coming up here at the bottom of the hour. So coming up at the break, MLB Who's Hot, Who's Not. We'll be right back here, guys, on the Man Hour. And welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buck, guys, along with Tori Anderson and the Wyatt Williams. Tonight, you guys can find us at Man Hour underscore Buck, Man Hour underscore TWW, and of course, underscore Man Hour underscore Tori as well. You can find us all on the Twitter machines. If you missed any part of the show, what's up? You can find us on iTunes, and Spotify, and Amazon Music, or you can find us on YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour as you upload the clips daily over there. So if you miss, if you just want to se- catch a simple section, you want to catch the NBA who's hot and who's not or the Dallas Cowboys draft breakdown and grades, you can head over to YouTube, and they'll be up there tomorrow. Uh, so check it check it out, guys. Uh, but, Tori, it is your time to shine, man. Normally, Brandon Combs gives us who's hot and who is and who is not Major League Baseball edition, but we are basically kind of tired of his biased uh, biased opinion, and it, basically everybody on the Cubs is, is like always hot, even though the Cubs are in last place. So... Give us some uh, who's hot and who's not picks, Tori. So you'll notice that this segment is just a little less biased. It's a little more well done. Mostly because there's no such thing as Chicago So Cubs basically it's just as biased. <laughs> <laughs> By Me a different fan. The impartial, the impartial journalist integrity that I have. So let's start with my who's hot and my Milwaukee Brewers. How's that for impartial? Wow, my Milwaukee Brewers. That. There you go. That, that a kid. Your Milwaukee Brewers. Why so not? the Milwaukee Brewers just took three out of four from the Dodgers. Everybody's going to want to point to the the stomping they took yesterday. Um, I, and I, as I told somebody else, you know what? If, if I win every series three to one like that, I'll take getting blown out 16 to two every day of the week. Because if I'm still winning 75% of my games, I'm probably winning the league. So, you know, they, they can point to that all they want. Um, currently, the Brewers aren't looking so hot tonight, but they just got Yelich back today. They got Lorenzo Cain back today. Um, they'll probably get Corbin Burns back at some point this week as well. You know, they, they swept the Padres last week. They had a little bit of a stumbling block in between there when they took on the Miami Marlins and lost two or three to them, but then came back and took three out of one. So between the Padres, who you'll also hear in my hot teams as well, and the Dodgers, that's two of the heavyweights right there in the National League. And they stood toe-to-toe, blow-to-blow, and came out victorious against both of them. Um, and, and how, then, you don't, sorry, how you don't consider how you don't consider this team 
one of the upper echelon at this point. And I, I'm, I'm not stupid. I sit there and I, I know there's a cliff coming. There will be a fall off. But damn, I'm enjoying the ride while it's there. <laughs> yeah, and as a Kansas City fan, I am enjoying the ride as well. As a as the uh, Royals do have the best record in MLB, as the Brewers do not. But the Royals are apparently uh, not on second your, best. Uh, but your Royals are still not on your hot team. But we'll go ahead and digress from that. But looking at the Brewers' schedule moving forward, they have a seven game road trip: four at Philly starting tonight, like obviously, and then they got three at the Miami Marlins, and then they're back at home versus the Cards, Braves, and they travel to Kansas City to a two game series. This is a rough two weeks, Tori. Are they going to stay hot after these uh, next next couple games? I I think they do, just because of the pitching. Their pitching has been consistent. Yeah. It's been tough, and it's been dominant for most of the year. Um, outside of trying to replace uh, Corbin Burns for those couple of games with his undisclosed injury. So the rumor is, is that he's got COVID. That, that's why he's on the list. But um, uh, the pitching staff is going to keep this team in there. They sent Keaston Hira down. They sent Tyrone Taylor down when they activated Kane and Yelich. If Kane and Yelich come back and they have found their swing, they've now got the offense to match that pitching staff. And yes, absolutely, I think that they can they can keep it rolling. All right, so you had your homer pick right off the bat, and uh, are we going to make Combs feel right at home and put the Cubs up there and then the and the who's hot? Yeah, no, no. Yeah, who's who's next? <laughs> so next, I got the San Diego Padres. San Diego Padres. In the words of Denny Green, they are who we thought they were. So they are starting to play exactly like we thought they were. Fernando Tatis is just tattooing the ball. Yeah. What, five home runs in his last three games? He's got like an ungodly, I think he's hitting like, what is he hitting? Like 346. He's, you know, got like over like a 600 on base percentage or something crazy like that. And he's just tearing the cover up the ball. Again, they've got a dominant pitching staff as well. Their pitching has carried them through as well. Through While their bats started to catch up and get going with the rest of it, their pitching staff has carried them. And they're, they're starting to become that team. And there again, that NL West is turning out to be way better than any of us thought. We always thought it would kind of be a uh, a two a two run, um, or not a two run, excuse me, a, a two team race there. So they, you know, the Giants are there, the Padres are there, the Dodgers are there. I think this could actually end up being one of the best divisions in baseball outside of the Rockies. The Rockies are just going to be awful. So, yeah, uh, looking at their schedule moving forward, they do have the Pirates, which is a Pirates is a very surprising team. I believe they're sitting a game or two right above 500. And then the Giants, I believe they were third or fourth on Hoffie's power rankings just last night. So they do have a couple, a, 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 a couple three-game series moving forward here. But do you see them kind of still keeping stride and keeping the bats alive and pitching, dominating versus these uh, next couple teams? I do, just because this is a team that's starting to find its groove. This is a team that is, like I said, it, they are who we thought they were. This is the team that has found its identity and they are going to start blasting the cover off of the ball against people. Um, we are, we are, I think, within the next two, three weeks here, we're going to see this team at its fullest potential. All right, so give me your last team of who is hot here in the Major League Baseball. So my last one is the Chicago White Sox. Again, another team that started off not great, kind of like, eh, which you know, Brandon and I and Hoffy have all kind of we're, we're all very skeptical of the Tony Larusa hiring. Um, I'm still not completely sold on it, but they're playing great baseball right now. Yerman Mercedes is uh, is one of the biggest, most pleasant surprises in all of baseball so far this year. You know, when Jimenez went down for them, I was like, "Well, there went your season," and uh, they're they're maintaining, they're doing what they got to do, and they're still winning ball games. They are one of the better teams in all of baseball. Um, uh, I would tell your Kansas City Royals, watch out because here comes the White Sox, my friend. Yeah, there is a huge series happening. I believe it starts Wednesday night. We do have the White Sox coming into town. Uh, sorry, it is actually this weekend. We have the Indians in town right, right now, and uh, Shane Shane Bieber is actually facing the Royals on Wednesday. So very, very tough slate of games for the Royals and White Sox both moving forward. But who else is on the opposite side of the hot, hot list? Who is cold in Major League Baseball right now, Tori? <laughs> Man, the one, the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Pittsburgh Pirates. Pittsburgh is right around that 500 mark. Don't expect them to stay there. They're starting to fall off. 
they're again they're starting to become the team that we know that they are. They are they may have surprised some people early on. They do not have the pitching and they do not have the bats to keep up with everybody else in the league. Um, they will be on the bottom of this division. Unfortunately, I do believe that um, Mr. Combs' Cubs will crawl out of the basement rather soon here, and the Pittsburgh Pirates will be firmly entrenched there for the rest of the season. I mean, yeah. I'll still be okay if the Cubs are in that second-to-last spot. Yeah, so actually the Pirates are now three games below five hundred. They are 12 and twelve and 15, losing four, four in a row after taking the series from the Tigers, the Twins, and taking a game or splitting a series with the Kansas City Royals as well, and they got swept by the Cardinals. And then they traveled West Coast to take on the Padres. So it doesn't get much easier for them moving forward. But who else is cold in Major League Baseball? Uh, the, the, you mentioned them, the Detroit Tigers. The Detroit Tigers are just they're the, they're the void of Major League Baseball these days. They're the team that people start writing into their contract of, I have I have no problem being traded to anywhere besides Detroit if I will absolutely not go to Detroit. You know, um, you know, people that know us, you know, Packer fans back in the seventies, these Packers weren't good. Players used to do that. You would hear players talk about that. About I will be traded anywhere but Green Bay, and I feel like that's what Detroit is these days. They're kind of just that void. They don't really have a direction. They've got some good young talent, but it doesn't seem like they ever try to add on to their young talent by making right. moves with some of the players that they have now. Um, you know, like a couple of years ago, they'd have been smart like three years ago, three years ago to like trade Iggy, you know, let him finish out his career, maybe chasing a ring. Maybe he didn't want to. I don't know. But however, you know, moving some of those aging stars and those aging veterans, A, getting those contracts out of there, B, getting some talent into that pipeline, something to give your fan base that to be excited about. There again, the Tigers aren't a major market team. They're a small market team. You have to know where your windows are, and you have to play accordingly, basically to those rules. We all know that there's two sets of rules in baseball. There's one for the guys that can afford everybody, and then there's everybody else. Right. So speaking of the Tigers here, things were looking up pretty pretty well. About a month ago, they, they swept the Houston Astros at Houston. Uh, since 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 then, they have won two games out of their last twenty. Uh, so definitely not very hot right now. So who is your last cold team in the Major League Baseball? So my last one is the Miami Marlins. Um, the thing is, they're cold, but they are young, and that is a team that has a ton of young talent on it. And I think they're more they're going to go through their lumps this year. They're not going to be very good. They are going to lose a lot of games. But you have to learn how to lose in order to figure out how to win. And I think that's where this Miami Marlins club will go. So um, they will take their lumps. They are not going to be very good. So they've lost, I believe, what, three in a row up yeah, to this they, point? Yeah, they they just got swept by the Nationals. But then they did take a series from your Brewers. So They did. Um, so it's like I said, they, they've got young talent. They're not They're not hopeless. Pittsburgh feels hopeless. Detroit feels hopeless. Yeah. Miami does not feel hopeless. It's like I said, there is still just a ton of young talent. The one thing that they do have, they have a really good pipeline there. They have a, that they can infuse young talent into that lineup pretty constantly, even if right. they do lose a couple of people. So, Yeah, and then just to add to your point there, I believe it was week one or week two, Hoffy actually had the Marlins in his top ten power rankings. I believe they're at eight or nine. If I'm not mistaken, I'll have to go back and play the tape. But he had them up there. But then since then, they have only won four of their last 16 games. So they are four and uh, uh, was that four and 11 in their last 16 games. So it's pretty pretty rough for for them right now. The bright side is their schedule does get a little bit easier when they do welcome the Brewers into town here in just a few weeks. Oh. So let me go ahead and bring up this comment that Drew brought up. He said, <laughs> only Tory and Wyatt would insert N- NFL into Major League Baseball. LOL drink. So fun fact, Drew, this is a NFL show. This is what we built everything on was NFL, and we tried to sprinkle a little bit of extra sports into basically kind of bring in more of the crowd. Yeah, just just a dash, right? But the NFL is definitely – our bread and butter as Wyatt starts to wake back up there because he is ready to talk some more NFC East football, aren't you, Wyatt? I'm ready to play our new game. We will get to the new game after the break. 
<laughs> but first, we got to talk a little bit more NFC NFL draft picks here, guys. And you know what? Let's talk some Aaron Rodgers, too, because Aaron Rodgers' saga is still going on hot and heavy here in the NFL. And Why are you trying to make two, White cry? We do have two Packer fans on here, and I am the troll of all trolls. So, 10 bucks says I can make White cry. Any any takers out there? I'm not going to cry. 10 bucks. <laughs> takers? D- deal. Anybody? Deal, let me know bucks. in and let me know in the chat. Oh, so why yes. why it just took it? All right, there we go. Why will be crying by the end of the show, guys? Hashtag Man Hour Nation. We'll be right back, guys. Here on the Man Hour. Welcome back to the Man Hour, guys. Michael Buckeyes along with Tori Anderson and D. Wyatt Williams. You can all find us on Twitter, Man Hour underscore Buck, Man Hour underscore TWW, and of course, Man Hour underscore Tori over there on Twitter. But you can also find Combs is there as well. He has the night off, uh, Man Hour underscore uh, Combs as well. If you guys have missed any part of the show whatsoever, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and of course, Amazon Music. But most importantly, you can find us on YouTube.com forward slash Man Hour. And as you see we upload the clips each and every day we have playlists you can just stick on the clips and you can scroll through which ones you want i'll let you know what exactly exactly it is so last night i uploaded a a, a, a clip says why it loves the, loves the bears and guess what why it says he loves the bears over and over and over again throughout that whole entire clip so let's go ahead and dive into some aaron Rodgers talk here guys we have about 15 minutes be before the new game guess that athlete comes up here so for those of you that have been living under a rock the draft day has come and gone two two draft days here and you packer fans have yet to been satisfied with a draft yet you draft jordan love last year and then you draft some guy that nobody knows as a cornerback this year not adding any weapons around aaron 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 Rodgers, even though wyatt says that you guys have one of the top receiver cores in all of football so i don't see what the big deal is but basically aaron Rodgers says he wants out He has given a list of teams of the Denver Broncos, the Raiders, and now he threw the Giants on there as well. Uh, So with that being said, why I'm going to kick it to you first because I like your transition the best. With that being said, should the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers just cut ties 100%? The Packers come up on come up on talk with, you know, two, three picks, you know, maybe four if the cards fall their way. Right. Should they just go ahead and move on, cut their ties? Wipe the hands and say, Jordan Love, it's your team now. Um, No, no, at least I hope they don't. Um, nothing against Jordan Love, but I think he's still got a little bit of time to sit behind Aaron if possible. Of course, I doubt that's going to happen. 
if it comes down to it, uh, Aaron's already said, did, didn't he say something today about like, uh, the only way he would stay is if they fired the GM or something. Because clearly the, the ownership in Green Bay Packerland is listening to Aaron Rodgers, right? So why would they listen to him about firing the general manager? Come on now. That, that's, that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at here. So, I mean, it's a tough situation. You know, I, I'd rather have Aaron than Brian. So at the end of the day, if I, if I had to choose, I would go with Aaron, you know, 10 times a week and then, you know, every, every single day, like it's, it's an easy decision on that one because Aaron's our quarterback. You know, I would, I would absolutely love to keep Aaron. Now I doubt that's going to happen at this point. So I don't know. I mean, what, what was, what was the, the teams again? Uh, from the things that I've heard, it was the Raiders, Broncos, and he threw the Giants in there this afternoon. But I don't know if the Giants is 100 percent true or not. And there I don't was think another team I thought, uh, or the 49ers as well. I'm sorry. No, you're, I don't. I don't think it'll be any NFC team. So I think we can go ahead and mark off the Giants. I think if anybody, it'll be an AFC team because why would the Packers? They've already got to deal with Tom Brady. Why would you want to deal with Aaron Rodgers too? Like so. I, if if I, if the Packers are smart and they're actually going to dish him off, God, I hope they don't dish him off to the NFC because if that's the case, that means for somebody to get to the Super Bowl in the NFC East, they are going to have to go through Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. So, no, no, I I don't I don't like their odds. <laughs> If the Packers are smart, they would take the highest bidder no matter who the team is. Uh, e- even if it's the Chicago Bears or the Detroit Lions, if they're offering you four first, first, for first round picks for a, a, a quarterback that has been in the league for 16 years, take it while, 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 while you can. Tor, you seem to be kind of a, the voice of reason most, most, most of the time, time here. Uh, I believe you told me that the Packers quarterback have never played over 16 years as a starter uh, for the Green Bay Packers. Packers and this is Aaron Rodgers' 16th year or going to be his 17th year. So do the Packers yeah. cut ties with him and come out ahead? Uh, I see it, but I don't. And it's no quarterback has played over the age of 35 for the Packers. Bart Starr was 35 when he left. Favre was 35 when he was left. Oh no, because Aaron's 37. So maybe it was the it was the years. That's what I, it was. I thought you said 16 years. 16 yeah, it was. years. It was. No, no Packers yeah. quarterback has played longer than 16 years. Bart right. played 16. Brett played 16. And Aaron Rodgers has completed 16 years for the Green Bay Packers. No. If so, he plays this year, it'll be 17. I, I'm, I'm going to go Wyatt on this one. I'm, I'm just a waffle everywhere. One, I could see him staying. Um, two, I could see him getting dealt. But if somebody would have wrote a blog – about how is, is is the NFL turning into the NBA? Um, that's what it feels like. So, literally, a blog. What I write that about what three months ago about yeah. is the is the NFL turning into the NBA? It kind of feels like that, where you're getting the players dictating who comes and goes to the team. You're getting right. people that are that want to dictate personnel decisions. You know, dictate who gets hired and fired. You know, I don't necessarily in all regards, think that's a terrible thing unless it's bad for the team. And Gutekunst at this point in my book or in my eyes is pr- basically giving Aaron the middle finger and like F off. This is my team, um, which if you would have learned anything from the Brett Favre saga, that's not the way to handle this situation. Uh, I don't think, I don't think that they get rid of him. Honestly, I think they try to force his hand and say, Either you play or yeah. you can sit. No, well, here's the thing. I think they call his bluff as well because um, if Aaron doesn't play this year, it's structured into his contract. If he doesn't play, he has to pay money back. $23 so like, million, dollars, $11.5 million for this year. and it, Oh, no, that's if he, he would retire. To, if he would retire, he has to pay back $23 million. No, I thought if he retires, he doesn't have to pay back anything. If he sits. No, nope, if he retires, he, have to, he has to pay back the two years left on the deal that he would have to do, and it's eleven and a half million this year and eleven and a half million next year. So he would have to give write out a check for twenty three million dollars. So I think Aaron Rodgers has that kind of money, and when he retires and sits out a like a year, and then he gets signed from a team like the Broncos, he might get that. He can't. He can't sign right. though because the Packers still own his rights. Yeah, they'll still own his rights for two years, right? Yes. Okay. Well, so you. Uh, 
I don't know. I mean, I, but you you did bring up the Brett Favre thing. He also retired in and 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 right. like three or four. So times. it's so. yeah, and it's it, it's a same. It's a almost the same situation, but completely different because Brett had retired on March twenty eighth of two thousand and seven. Was it two thousand seven or two thousand eight? It was my birthday. That's all I know. And they installed the offense. They took it around Aaron. They set everything up around Aaron and training camp started. And Brett goes, well, I want to come back. Well, Brett, we just went through all OTAs and the off season stuff and everything else and installed the offense. Uh, you said you're retired, dude. Sorry. Yeah. So, you know, and they basically said he could come back, but they said, you're going to be the backup. And he said, Nope, <laughs> not going to happen. Uh, so let me go ahead and address some of these comments here because some of these are very, uh, very, um, eye raising here and uh chris uh thank you for joining us again and chris for here he says rogers is re- is heading for jeopardy um i don't think he was that good a host on Je- jeopardy i'm just be flat what guys. you shut your mouth you I, know I, that's he, blasphemy he was definitely not very good and he, the thing he, is is he is a huge jeopardy fan and yeah. learned everything he could possibly learn like he'll tra- alex trebek was his idol right. so like he like wanted to do it perfection wise did you see the sticky notes he had behind the podium? Aaron Aaron, Aaron Rodgers was the second greatest Jeopardy host of all time. Behind me? Yeah, behind you. How, Alex Trebek how, was third. How great would that be if you had like 30 seconds to answer a question when I'm stuttering and can't pronounce half the words? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that, boys. Uh, but but let's go ahead and get back into the serious note, note here. Drew says, Aaron better be careful. Uh, just because we are now in the same situation as Deshaun Watson was, the Texans are setting on uh, – the, the basically the Texans has set a president on how to handle a arrogant QB. Uh, I mean, for those guys that don't know what's happening with Deshaun Watson, you know, he wanted to trade, he wanted out, and then all of a sudden there's 20, there's 20, there's 20, 22 sexual assault cases a, a against him. Tori, you are from the Wisconsin area. I mean, you you live, what, half hour from the stadium, right? It could, could something like that happen in Green Bay because hey, I've I've seen making of a murderer. I've seen that they can twist the system into whatever they they want up there in Wisconsin and yeah, Milwaukee no, County, there, whatever that is. The, there there is literally zero chance of that ever happening here. Um, I'm pretty sure any woman here that was like, I can get pregnant by Rogers. Uh, yes, please. <laughs> so. Um, they would be like, ah, uh, yeah, I'm set for life. So yeah, no, nothing like that. Like so the Packers are handling this wrong. Um, I, it's like I said, something just eats at me that the Texans are behind all these sexual assault allegations. And I really hope they get exposed. I just really want to be right yeah. on that conspiracy theory. Uh, so well, even then- if it is true, we'll never find out. Oh, absolutely. I would not. I would love for us to, but there's no way if if literally there is a phone call of the Texas GM saying, "Hey, we're doing this right now, you know, we're faking this, all this stuff." Roger Goodell would hide it and you we would never, and I mean never hear about it. First it of all, they out. would never come out and publicly admit that because you're talking about felonies and years and years in jail because of the of the uh false the false police allegations and the collusion and there's 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 so much intertwining that that would that have to come on come on unravel money on money script. as you've seen yeah. money can almost buy you anything yeah um so and then drew also oh, joseph oh, oh, over here in the uh, youtube cha- channel as like as well saying that the broncos definitely need a qb that would be a top choice you guys just picked up teddy bridgewater I mean, Teddy Bridgewater is a pretty good quarterback. Granted, he isn't the top 15 or top 10 or top 2 He's quarterback better than Andy in, Dalton, in, who in, you in, said the uh, top 15 quarterback. Andy Dalton is a top 15 quarterback. Oh, my God. No. So, Teddy Bridgewater is a better quarterback than him. We will see this year. Oh, I guess probably not since Andy Dalton will be a backup to just to Giles. No, nope, they've, said, they've said Andy Dalton will be the starter this year. Until about week five. But we will see how that comes. But then Drew also comes out and uh, – Brings up the Caution Palmer thing. I don't know how the whole Caution Palmer thing worked. I think he actually sat out a a full season, right? And then they ultimately traded him to Arizona. Is it or like I don't remember to, the whole call, to call Oakland. Palmer. Oh, to they Oakland. traded him to Oakland. But so he yeah, he Arizona? actually he sat. He said, "Nope, I'm done." And I think they traded him right after the season started. Maybe I don't think he sat out the whole year. 
Le'Veon Bell was the first player to actually sit out an entire year. I want to say they dealt him, though, and it may have been just before the trade deadline as well in the NFL, which would have been like in October. So, yeah, I um, don't remember how that thing whole went down, but I do know he sat out for like he, he was the first player to ever sit out, right? Because the whole contract situation. I don't was his was he wasn't really contract. It was more that they were just a terrible oh, organization. Yeah, he did, he just wanted out. But yeah, he just uh, wanted he wanted out of there. He didn't care. I will have to do my research on that, Drew, and uh, see how that whole Carson thing uh, went up here, guys. But we are going to take our last break here on the Man Hour. On the other side of the break, we're going to introduce our new game, saying "Guess Who." So basically, what happens here on Guess Who is. Uh, Tori and Wyatt, since they're on to tonight, they'll ask a series of yes or no questions to figure out which athlete I am thinking of. So it's simple. Guess who? So ask yes or no co- questions and bada bing, bada boom. The winner wins something. So we'll expl- explain what's going on here I'm, after the break. I'm officially scared. Officially scared. You should be. Man, our nation. We'll I'm excited back. to win. All I win is win, 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 win. Welcome back to the Man Hour Nation, guys. Michael Buck, guys, along with Tori Anderson and the Wyatt Williams. If you missed any part of the show whatsoever, you can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Or you can also go to youtube.com forward slash man hour. You can hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. You get uploads every day of the week from the clips. So if you missed any part of the show, check us out here on the YouTube. But it is time to introduce a new game here, guys. We are going to test the waters here. It is called Guess Who? So like I was explaining to you before the break, you simply ask a yes or no question to guess a current athlete. We are going to narrow it down to the to the NFL, Major League Baseball, or NBA. So we'll give you guys just, you know, those three major sports. And, of course, it is going to be an active player. And how many, how many over, players is it? What's that? How many players is it? It's one. You guess who? Like the band. Guess who? One. Oh, okay. You're going to guess one athlete. So you will narrow it down for a series of yes or no questions to ultimately guess your guess. And at the end of the night, whoever wins is going to get three minutes, uninterrupted time, no mute button because we do love the mute button here. You will get a chance to boast about whatever you want. You can boast about Aaron Rodgers. You can boast about your Brewers. You can boast about your Chicago Cubs. You can boast about whoever you want. You get three uninterrupted minutes. But at the end of the month, the person with the worst winning percentage has to wear their rival team's shirts. So you guys are Packers fans. So you guys get to basically pick between the Vikings and the Lions because let's let's just be honest, the Bears is not much of a rival to the Green Bay Packers. And then when Combs <laughs> is on, uh, he will get a chance to play as well. 
Everybody straight on the rules? Let's do it. All right. So, Wyatt, you are the youngest. So let's give our elders the chance to to go first. We 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 need to, you know, support our elders and we'll let them go first. Does that sound fair? What's that, Sonny? Speak up. I can't <laughs> hear you. So with that being said, Tori, I, I have already narrowed it down to you for three sports and it is a active player in these professional sports. So you get to go first with a yes or no question. All right. Are they a major league baseball player? No. My turn? Yes. Okay. Are they an NFL well, player? Wait, that's his question. That was a yes or no question. <laughs> yes, they are in the <laughs> NFL. Okay. Do they play offense? No. Are they on the defensive line? No. Are they a cornerback? Are they in the NFC? No. Is it the Honey Badger? Yes. Tori got it. Bam! That. Boom, oh! Baby. Sheesh. Was that too easy? Yes. Because yes. <laughs> you let your homerness show through. <laughs> well, I had to make the first one easy, and we had to give Tori the, you know, the grace of, you know. Do another one. We've got so much time to kill. Do another one. Okay, let me, let me pick a team here. At that rate, we can do like three. Oh, uh, I mean, I just when I went with that, he probably picked a homer person and no, you said I, defensive I, line. I said defensive back. He said no, but he hesitated when he said no. So I'm yeah. like, it's it's the honey badger. Yeah, because, be, be, well, because that was fast. Sometimes he plays corner and sometimes he plays safety, but I believe he's listed as a strong safety. If I'm not he's a safety. What, why did I safety. not tell you I was going to mop the floor with you? <sighs> All right. So, Tori, let huh. me go ahead. Do you? Do you guys want to mark that up as a practice round, or is, is, is that a no? Absolutely no, no. not. G- no, give him a win. Give him a win. Tori we'll just do best two out of three. We got plenty of time. All right. So, I, so give him one on the night. I I got the uh, next player picked up. So why you you you, you can go go first here? All right. Are they a basketball player? No. Are they a major league baseball player? Yes. Oh God, I'm screwed. Um. <laughs> Do they play for the Padres? No. Oh, God. Is it Mike Trout? No. Is it Otani? No. Do they play in the American League? Yes. Oh. Um, are they... Are they an AL West team? No. Is it Salvador Perez? Yes. Dude, stop it. <laughs> what make it is easy this? tonight. I'll make this it is easy. not easy. I don't even know who Salvador Perez is. Oh, I'm just kidding. I do know who Salvador Perez is, but God. All right. Let's go ahead and do one more here. We will we will make this one a little bit harder. So these are uh, these are currently active players in the NFL. They could be draft picks, they can be rookies, but they are currently on an NFL roster. So I, 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 I just want to point, the, point, point that out there just to give you guys some, uh, s- some uh, leeway there. So, why you are 0-2 on the night. So, we'll let you go first on this next one. Jeez. Oh, well, where do I start here? Do they play? You, you did say they were in. What league were they in? You haven't asked anything yet. It's, you just said they were football players a second ago. I didn't say that, but I'm saying like you did. You are, did say that. You did say that. Are, That's why you confused they me. They are they are active players in football draft picks, et cetera. So so the they're in. A, so they're an NFL player. Well, the major league baseball draft is happening. Well, I got to ask the question, Wyatt. So they're an NFL player, yes or no? No. Are they a basketball player? Yes. Oh, here we go. Okay, okay. Well, feeling a little better about this. Are they in the Western Conference? I have to check. I don't know. I'm not very good at basketball. <laughs> uh, Sorry about that. I should have. Uh, I mean, I was expecting it to be a little bit harder than the first one. So I, let me. Uh, let me. Uh, I'm not a it. smart man, but I know my sports. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. There's. There it is. Did you? Did you ask if they're in the Eastern Conference? West. I asked no, they're in the Western Conference. conference. Uh, no. Are they on one of the top three teams in the East? No. Nope. 
are they hmm, are they top five in the East? No. Okay. Is it Jimmy Butler? No. Is it Jason Tatum? Eastern Conference. This is tough. It is, this one is tough. They're not top five. So, are they in the playoffs currently? Yes. It's LaMelo Ball. No. Hmm. Is it Malcolm Brogdon? No, I don't even know who, the, who that is. <sighs> is it? This is tough. Yeah, this one did, like you actually put is thought it, into this one. Yeah, this one was pretty good. Is it Russell Westbrook? No. Man, what? So let me go ahead and uh, I, I address some of these comments here. Joseph says it's Jonas or. or Sorry, the Greek freak. Uh, no, they are currently um, they are currently what 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 are they like th- third right now in the East, right? Yeah. So whose turn is it? It's you mine. said they're you said they're not top five, right? Not top five, but they are in the playoffs now. Whenever you say in the playoffs now, whenever you say in the playoffs, are you playoffs. counting? Are you counting? Are you counting the play-in tournament as well? So like all the way through the tenth seed. Well, yeah, because that would, could be considered top five. So five, yeah. four, three, two, one. Hmm. Okay. Is it Demontis Sabonis? No. That was my next guess. I'm so glad you missed on that one. Um, is it Tyler Hero? Ding, I ding, knew it. ding, I ding. knew it was the Kentucky boy. UK guy, yes. yes. So, Tori, you are 2-1. and one. Why? You are 1-2. and two. So, Thanks. Rough start. That, that is our new game. I think we need That's some fun. Kind of like so, some some like background music and uh, – and like I will not and not pick your Homer teams. <laughs> I was I was actually going to go Aaron Rodgers the first one, but then I'm like, oh, that'd be too easy. And I'm like, well, Patrick Mahomes on that'd be like just like easier. But then I was thinking, Honey Badger, you know, may, many people forget he plays on the Kansas City Chiefs. Too no, for nobody, me. nobody the forgot God that he of plays all football. <laughs> no, right, he guys. said the he said the, <laughs> the guy that uh, people forget he plays on the Chiefs. The Honey Badger? Yeah. People don't forget he plays on the Chiefs. Everybody knows he plays on the Chiefs. He's the whole defense. So <laughs> so Drew says we should we should do the Jeopardy thing. That's uh, asking for a copyright. Yes, it is. So yeah. So fun so demonetized. Fun fact, so fun fact, guys, here here, let me play this for for you. This is our this is our what the th- jingle. Do you guys hear that? Listen. You guys hear that? Yeah. That is my son saying "dad, auto tuned and mixed up, and then me saying "what the making my own beat over GarageBand," and it gets copyrighted every time for some reason. I just I'm just putting it out there. So YouTube is what? very very sensitive uh, like about that stuff. So Je- Jeffy theme is definitely out, but we'll like we'll definitely think of something. Catch us live on Twitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Tori, you get um, three un- 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 uninterrupted time here to. Boast about your team. What do you want to talk about for three minutes? Well, I'm going to talk about the greatest team in the entire land. You know which team that is? Green Bay Packers. Team I'm on. That is the team I'm on now, with my friend Mike, my friend Wyatt, my friend Combs. This is the best team that we've ever had. Yeah. Best team. Best team that ever will be. And the best team that there ever damn will be. So um, I'm just thankful for the opportunity to have met. Uh, a couple of great guys, uh, one great kid who's turning into one hell of a great guy. Um, this is this has been quite the ride, kind of learning and going and growing all at the same time. Um, literally, this was all by chance for all of us, I think. And we, we've we grown into kind of like our own little family fraternity because if you guys saw some of the things that we said to each other, like, uh, you know, even sometimes like when we are on air, 
and we just will harp on each other. You would honestly think we don't like each other, but it's the whole mentality of I can mess with them, but if you mess with them, somebody's probably going to end up dead. So, you know, this is our family. This is our little group. Uh, I couldn't be more thankful. Um, we got everybody that's watching us now that, you know, is starting to come on board. You know, we uh, we realize it that it's only going to be family and friends for a little bit. But as the word gets out on what we're doing here, and we really hope that you guys are enjoying what we do here, um, you know, we, we we are super appreciative of everything that goes on. So without you guys, we aren't anything. Without each other, I don't think we're as strong as we are. So, um, well, wait, yeah, Brandon's only saying that he's happy to have me here because he's not on camera. Because yesterday he was like, please don't agree with Tori so he, will, so he won't talk. So... <laughs> I'm I'm calling shenanigans already on that one. Yeah, so Tori, that was a great three minutes. A little hard. That was awesome, like, bro. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, that, so we are definitely growing. Like we like we are consistently seeing new people in the chat. We have opportunities. You know, we are on the Big X Sports Radio here Monday through Friday, three p.m. East Coast time. A lot of those viewers don't come over to the YouTube channel and like interact with us or like the Facebook. So we we are glad that you guys are here. You know, helping us out and interacting with us and Stacy. I love you. I, I want to be your pool boy. So, Stacy, anytime you get a pool, you 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 call me. I'll be Copa, your, I'll be Copa your pool Cabana. boy. <laughs> All right. Why? Any closing thoughts here before we start the before we start the after show? Yes, sir. Right, hang, hang, hang on, guys. The after show link is in the description right now. If you're at youtube.com forward slash man hour, hit the description button, and the link is in the description. So, if you are a member, click on that. We're live right there on the after hours. Quiet. Set us way. Back. Man hour nation. Rise up, baby.